But even that now is being challenged because the main mechanism of evolutionary change does a nice job of explaining small scale variation. Mm. What Tucker was referring to, I think, is adaptation. Mm. This would be examples like Darwin's finches, where the beaks get a little bigger, a little mm. smaller in response to varying weather patterns. But it does a very poor job of explaining the major innovations in the history of life, such as the origin of birds or mammals or animals in the first place. And there in the fossil record, we do see very abrupt, many uh, uh, instances of very abrupt appearance without the trans transitional intermediates that you'd expect on the basis of the Darwinian picture of the, the tree of life. So is your belief that the Darwin theory actually fails then? I think it does fail. Uh, I think it, it captures an element of the truth. It, it, there's a, the, the small scale microevolutionary variation is certainly a real process and no one uh, disputes that. Natural selection is a real process, but what's, it, what's it at issue now is the degree to which it has genuine creative power. And I think at this 2016 conference, the opening talk was given by a prominent Austrian evolutionary biologist, not an American talk show host. <laughs> and uh, uh, he enumerated five major explanatory deficits of neo-Darwinism, mm -hmm. many of them surrounding this problem of the mechanism lacks the, the generative or creative power necessary to account for the major innovations in the history of life.